Hello, YouTubers, friends, compatriots. Blue Liquor Shells, Deathly Search, Pheasant, Fassel, Famous, Meat Sacks. Well, there. Welcome. I'm a useful idiot. And I'm um, continuing my series about police. And uh, I find this the most interesting. Unfortunately, I found a, a very good article uh, to source uh, for this material. But uh, the whole concept of uh, the police uh, needs to be examined as well. Uh, when looking at all, all these issues about the police in uh, modern society, modern American society right now. And, uh, of course, as I uh, brought up in, in the other videos, this is very relevant now because uh, uh, we really have to examine where the police are at right now on a number of levels and look at some very uh, core assumptions and take apart a lot of this uh, police mythology. So this series isn't about necessarily attacking the police uh, as much as um, having a, a, a discussion about the, about the realities of the, of the police, trying to look at it objectively and, uh, and uh, dissipate some of this mythology. And part, one of the mythologies that we have to deal with is that somehow the police are there to protect and serve the citizens. And uh, we got a, a harsh reminder of the reality of that, of course, recently with uh, um, statements by some of these police union leaders, some of these, uh, uh, I think Mr. Lynch in uh, New York City, and um, as well as uh, uh, previous statements we've heard uh, referencing legal decisions uh, that state that the police have uh, no uh, particular um, um, requirement to uh, protect and serve citizens. Uh, so they, they need to protect and serve themselves, and that's essentially what the police do. And uh, another part of this uh, that's uh, certainly relevant is this uh, concept that police brutality and this kind of police violence is anything new. Certainly it's reaching uh, very um, um, dramatic levels now, and rather shocking levels. But um, I think that uh, if one goes back through history, we find that the police have always functioned the way they do now. And uh, there's just more or less times and uh, sometimes and not other times where uh, it becomes a top feature in the media. And, uh, and, and certainly uh, m most people my age can re remember uh, a lot of police brutality uh, going all the way back to uh, uh, through history uh, in, the, in the 19th century, but also in our own time seeing uh, police brutality at the Democratic Convention of 1968 in the uh, Kent State, the Watts riots in the 60s, uh, and, and for some people uh, more recently than that, seeing the actions we saw uh, after the Rodney King beating. But uh, anyway, uh, if you go back through history, you find out that uh, it helps us understand why the police function the way they do, uh, historically and now, um, just looking at, at what their real purpose was uh, when they were created, and, uh, and then certainly the role they play right now. And that is to protect the elites and protect uh, uh, the, the wealthy to protect corporate interests. And that, that, that's always been its function, in much the same way that the United States military uh, in the history books is all about spreading democracy and freedom around the globe. But when one looks at all the conflicts, the reality as Smedley Butler pointed out, is that the uh, United States military is used all over the globe to protect corporate interests and to expand corporate interests. And the same thing with the police. Uh, they are there uh, to protect the elite class, not, not the citizens, not necessarily to solve those kind of crimes. And, that, and that's why we find the police being used for uh, revenue generation. Uh, they're interested in, uh, in crime to a certain extent for revenue generation uh, and in protecting the uh, property and um, um, safety interests of the upper classes, but uh, they're not really interested in, in low-level crime. Crime, uh, once again, only as revenue generation. So let's get into the meat and potatoes here. So uh, before the 19th century, there really weren't police as we know them now, uh, nearly anywhere in the world. There was more military and colonial forces um, and consulates and that sort of thing. And in, in the U.S. For example, there were sheriffs and constables, as well as slave patrols, but you know, not not necessarily the police as we know them. And that's part of the reasons why a lot of this uh, Western 
uh, Wild West mythology has grown up uh, because uh, it, it, it bespeaks of a world where there really wasn't uh, law enforcement per se, except for you know these lone individuals or deputies, or constables, uh, spread out wide in, in territories. So uh, the first actual police forces were uh, uh, created because m municipal elites hired hundreds and then thousands of armed men uh, to impose order on the new working class neighborhoods. So that, that's why we have this development in the 19th century with all the immigrants coming to the United States, uh, this burgeoning working class, these uh, these lower class neighborhoods uh, growing and, and, uh, and a certain amount of agitation as labor uh, came and went. And uh, so no surprise that it would be the, the city elites who created these police forces in order to protect property and, and interests of theirs. And, and the class conflict and labor battles that raged through the mid to late 18th century were, were very violent and, and bear this out. So let's remember that police uh, were a class control mechanism. And that's still what they are. Um, so you had the Great Railroad Strike of 1877, the Pullman Strike of 1894, the Lawrence Textile Strike of 1912, the Ludlow Massacre of 1914, the Steel Strike of 1919, uh, Hanapepe in 1924, um, Centralia, Washington um, in the uh, early uh, uh, 20th century. And as I said, uh, we still see the same. And th these were all uh, harsh police actions with uh, essentially um, police uh, putting down, uh, arm, uh, armed police putting down uh, and slaughtering uh, labor um, protests. And uh, like I say, we see this uh, continuing uh, into uh, the 60s in the Democratic Convention in 68, Kent State. Uh, of course, we had National Guard called out there and, and four students were killed. Uh, the Watts riots in the 1960s. Um, we can find all sorts of police actions uh, protecting the interests of the elite classes uh, all through the United States uh, history in the 19th century and the 20th century. And um, so we, uh, we see this uh, uh, core uh, challenge to the mythology about the police that they're there to protect uh, the the civilians. This assumption the police are supposed to uh, serve and protect the population, and um, this uh, the discussion of all these facets of police out of control, but not so much a discussion of the real function of police, and, and that's why we uh, we need to examine historically um, where the origin of the police came and why they're uh, why they're created. In another more recent example we've seen of this uh, phenomenon is, of course, when Occupy uh, New York or Occupy Wall Street uh, happened in New York several years back, uh, where we saw the police hired uh, to protect all the banks. Uh, J.P. Morgan, in fact, J.P. Morgan, as we found out later, donated millions, uh, an unprecedented uh, donation, an unprecedented amount of millions uh, to the police union and uh, got personal service and uh, we see that uh, corporate interests and moneyed interests and elite interests and banker interests and government interests are all served by the protection of the police and a substantial amount of protection. Uh, and a good example of that uh, is motorcades when you, the president travels around the U.S. and these massive motorcades and, and the entire uh, state's uh, police uh, apparatus is put at the service uh, a, a government uh, visitor, so that's uh, another example of this. But uh, once you once you start with that basic premise that the police are not there to protect and uh, serve the citizens, uh, once you start with that premise, it's easy to start looking around and seeing uh, plenty of examples of uh, the fact that uh, the police are a uh, class control mechanism. That is their function and uh, revenue generation. So uh, th those are their two main functions right now. Uh, revenue generation, class control mechanism. And um, uh, we also see this because of the transition from the old working class neighbors, uh, neighborhoods that had to be, uh, uh, have the elites have to protect themselves from these uh, burgeoning uh, working class neighborhoods in the 19th century. We see that same phenomenon manifested today with uh, urban neighborhoods uh, became, becoming the same sort of threat and the police using the same uh, tactics. So just so 
let's keep that in mind historically as well when we see the way that the uh, 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 poor communities, whether they're white, Latino, or black, uh, the way those communities are treated by the police, uh, we have a long history in the United States of, of those similar uh, uh, demographics being treated the same way uh, back through the 19th century. Uh, it's only just tr uh, uh, transformed uh, to encompass uh, uh, the, the modern world that we're in now. So anyway, there's a, another part of my series about police uh, challenging this, this whole idea that we have uh, um, police for uh, protecting the citizens. And uh, we also have to remember, too, that the, the police were organized from the very beginning to be removed from the democratic process of uh, the, the elites, the municipalities, uh, the movers and shakers in, in, in cities across the United States in the 19th century um, removed the police from the uh, uh, democratic process and, and keeps they have their own hierarchies, their own government governance, and their own rules of behavior. And one of the reasons why the uniforms were created. And um, it's important to bear in mind that the same uh, isolation works. And, and one of the reasons, once again, why it's a uh, little dangerous uh, for the police to be getting involved in, in politics uh, when they are a, in, inherently an undemocratic process with their own hierarchy, government rules of behavior. And, um, and, and in fact, going back to the, the beginning and the creation uh, of the first uh, police departments in Chicago, for example, businessmen themselves, businessmen, the big businessmen in Chicago in the 19th century, donated money to buy the police rifles, artillery, Gatling guns, whole buildings and set up their pension programs. Uh, so is, is the scenario any really different now? Um, and, and certainly not when we have uh, the military industrial complex and the government getting together to uh, militarize and militarize and arm the police. So we have, we also have a history of uh, having the police being a, a very uh, powerfully armed against a supposedly a, a domestic, a tranquil domestic population and um, so and, and then the massive prison system that goes along with this but that's a topic I've covered elsewhere and we'll cover again and uh, so there we have it um, this is about class uh, once again and uh, the police has a class control mechanism and revenue generation just bear that in mind they're not there to protect you and me I'm useful idiot don't you be one too